Hello friends and family and welcome to our boring meditation stuff. Today I wanted to talk about land disputes um, because this has come up in my life recently despite uh, most of the world still suffering under a crippling pandemic. Um, there was a, an event recently. Um, some friends and I own some property in Canada together and that property um, holds uh, control over a right of way to some other properties that we really don't want to see developed into a suburb or something like that we we like the property as it is sort of um, naturey wildernessy forest kind of thing and it's, it's funny to think about um, this idea of impermanence that so often, uh, I did another video, I think, um, uh, this uh, Sabbe Sankara Nichati that video um, if you saw it uh, this is the, the difference between the philosophy of um, this idea that everything is impermanent and the reality that everything is impermanent so on one hand we have land disputes right um, land titles and um, these kinds of stories you hear about brothers who were they were willed some land and um, not in equal proportions or one tries to steal land from the other and uh, becomes a family feud or they fall out of love and um, they stop speaking to each other and these sorts of things and prior to ever owning any property i always thought that this was kind of silly <laughs> this idea of oh, how can someone get so upset about that how can people get so upset about borders or uh, tensions between countries and there's tensions right now between India and China um, and then when you get into these situations you realize they are very uh, toxic in a very literal sense right it feels like it feels like you're poisoned inside when you think about someone taking from something from you or someone harming you um, these are terrible feelings um, that a person naturally has in response and the idea that even if everything goes wrong if I lose all my property I lose all my rights I lose everything that I want it was all impermanent anyway going to fall. This is a philosophy um, and the philosophy unto itself is not wrong. <laughs> it's entirely true. It's all impermanent. You have no control ultimately over the, the end result and even if you manage to hold on to that land and all your rights and all your property your entire life you yourself will die and I myself will die. And at the end, everything is lost anyway. So what's the big deal? Um, but that intellectualization doesn't help. <laughs> it doesn't make you feel any less bad when someone is threatening your property or threatening your land. Um, and what's interesting is that it's helpful to have the, the intellectualization, the rationalization for the time when these things occur. Not because the intellectualization buys you anything, but through meditation, you'll find yourself becoming more sensitive to yourself. You will feel this angry heat, this fear shaking you inside. Oh, what happens if I lose this property? What happens if something happens to me? What happens if 
everything goes wrong and you get upset. And you can feel more clearly when you meditate the fact that you are getting upset. I can feel the fact that I'm getting upset. That doesn't always mean that I'm very good at dealing with it. <laughs> Sometimes I will start getting upset about something like this and I'll notice it and I'll be like, shut up, body. <laughs> I don't want to hear about how upset I am right now. I'm too upset to listen to you. Um, and so it's, it's not all or nothing. Um, there's, there's a real measure of training the mind to be okay with these situations and learning to bring your attention back to these objects which help you, the breath and the body. Um, and especially in times where we're very stressed out, very angry, very afraid, very anxious, the breath more than anything even for the very experienced meditators, the breath is a consistent, gross object. It's something that you can always find, and if need be, you can even control. You can take three, four, ten hard breaths. Okay. When people tell you count to ten, add some breaths with that. Okay. <laughs> As you work your way through some some extremely gross emotional state, right? And if you can bring it down to a point where you have even a little bit of control over it, then you can watch the breath. Okay, let me just watch the breath. Forget about the land, forget about right of way, uh, forget about these other silly intrusions upon my life um, and focus on the breath. That's real. And you realize that, okay, yes, again, at a very gross level, that land will go away, I will go away, everything is impermanent. And at a very gross level, that's a helpful tool to say, oh, okay, right, right, <laughs> like, just calm down. You don't have control over everything, and you certainly don't have control over this. Um, but on a subtler level, you can use the, the joining if you have the subtle sense of the body and the breath over here. And if you have the really gross, reified, uh, concrete um, philosophy idea of land and my own body and these sorts of things over here. You can find the space in the middle where they meet and you can say, oh, okay, like I am just following the breath. Here's the breath. Okay, here's a breath. Here is another breath. Here is another breath. This is real. This is true. These breaths are here. And you'll realize in acknowledging that that is true, that this is not true at all. Your perception of property isn't true. <laughs> That's not a real thing. That's a thing human beings made up. And we drew lines on maps and we said, oh, this is this country and this is this country and this is my property and this is your property. None of it exists. Whatever exists is the reality on the ground. A house is true. Um, a fence is true. But someone can jump over a fence. Someone could burn down your house and then it's no longer true. Um, and the fear that we feel about these sorts of situations. What if someone steals all my stuff? What if someone burns down my house? Um, those fears are very much not true. They're not real. They're, they're this highly imaginary um, emotion-based synthesis where we keep thinking that this represents reality. Oh, this is like reality. <laughs> it's a possible reality. And it is a possible reality, but so is anything. Um, and those imaginations don't help us at all. So 
Um, this was a very real event which happened recently. <laughs> um, oh, what if someone bulldozes a road uh, through our property? Well, then we'll deal with it, I guess. Hopefully that doesn't happen. Um, but it was a very concrete application of meditation where I'm not meditating at those times. I'm still thinking about the problem, but I'm realizing in the moment how much meditation has helped me be aware of my own mental state. So I can take a step back and say, oh, okay, like just relax for a minute. Nothing's going to happen right now. Nothing's going to happen tomorrow. And whatever does happen is ultimately okay. That's fine. <laughs> it's not that big a deal. Um, and this, this is where I think uh, people can get off track again, is that these philosophies get mixed up with the meditation part. Um, oh, everything is impermanent. Well, that has a great deal to do with meditation and at the same time it has nothing to do with meditation. The, that idea has nothing to do with meditation. It is only the direct observance direct observation rather it would be the same dramatically <laughs> the direct observation of impermanence to watch change within your own body which is the only thing that you're really definitively attached to the only thing that you could say with any certainty as long as you feel like you are an individual this is mine what about this shirt well, somebody can cut it or burn it or rip it off or steal it while you're sleeping. Um, what about these contact lenses? I mean, they can go away just as easily. What about my ear? Well, okay, if somebody cuts that while I'm sleeping, I lose it, I guess. But that feels pretty attached. That feels like, this feels like my ear. <laughs> and so if you start exploring the body beginning with the breath this is this is kind of the last concrete attachment right like what else do we have other other than this um and even that is kind of philosophical um that's not really the point the point isn't to find out oh it's not my body after all um oh the body's changing all the time who would have thought um, the point is to become intimate with your body so you know, oh, okay, when my breath is really erratic, I'm upset. When my heart is beating fast, something is wrong. And what is wrong is probably that I'm overreacting most of the time, in my case. Um, and that we're often unaware of these things. Why are we unaware? Because we don't pay attention. And so meditation helps us to begin to pay attention to uh, ourselves, really, in the most literal sense, like our body. Um, I hope no one steals your land. <laughs> I hope no one bulldozes a road through your property, just like I hope no one bulldozes a road through mine. Um, but more importantly, I hope that you're all taking good care of each other, good care of yourselves, and I will talk to you tomorrow. Goodbye.